Hi, Sadaf. Melissa's here. How are you? Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, this is Hibba, Circle Ambassador. I cordially welcome you all in today's workshop about branding and storytelling by Melissa Sassi. Before introducing the trainer, uh, let me first introduce Circle and its initiatives to you all. Circles Pakistan mission is to advance women's economic participation and improvement through workshops innovative you know, inter entrepreneurship and leadership labs, advocacy, research, and campaigns. Uh, a cycle's initiative includes TechCaro, uh, that gives us uh, courses that provide courses to the students about digital uh, web development, and she loves tech, second one is she loves tech, and third is Elevate. This, is, this year, cycle's ambitious goal is to reach out 10,000 women and girls under SLT through the Pakistan with the collaboration of 
Friedrich Naumann Foundation for Freedom. Habib Bank Limited and UNDP. It is necessary to invest in youth, especially in women, to build confidence, capacity, and create platforms for them. This workshop, Branding and Storytelling, is supported by Friedrich Naumann Foundation for Freedom, which aims to contribute to soft skills in the field of business, communication, and responsible citizenship. Uh, now I'll introduce our Let me introduce now our uh, trainer. She is Melissa Sassi. She is founder and CEO of Mentor Nations, a youth lead digital skills movement. She is chair of IEEE's Digital Intelligence Initiative and founder member of Coalition for Digital Intelligence with IEEE, DQ, WEF, and OECD institutes. She holds board position with TechMill and TechWoman Afghanistan to enhance the skills in women. She has given more than 100 UN events, conferences, that is educational and technical conferences, not speaker. Let us welcome Melissa Sassi. Joining us, Melissa. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. I took my background off because it, it was making my uh, my my shirt fly off into nowhere. So I hope uh, I hope that's okay. Um, my name is Melissa Sassi, and uh, I'll, I'll first introduce myself. Um, give me one second. I just need to wipe off my um, my camera because it's a little bit it's showing a little bit fuzzy. Okay, there we go. That's better. Okay. So um, let me introduce myself. I will tell you um, a few different things about me. So I, uh, I work at IBM. That's my, my day job. And I have actually been to Pakistan uh, three times. Um, I haven't made it out into uh, the countryside yet. Um, I, I look forward to, uh, to traveling to, uh, to rural areas. I've been to um, uh, Karachi and uh, Lahore all, uh, all three times, but hopefully, inshallah, I will get out to the, to the rural areas. Uh, at IBM, I run a, uh, a startup program. Uh, so I have 45 startups in my portfolio and uh, three of my startups, um, even though they're registered in different places, the founders are, uh, are, uh, are from Pakistan and many of their team members are from Pakistan. Um, I've uh, done a lot of talks uh, with people in Pakistan and also in Pakistan, as you as you learned. Uh, I'm very connected into the the startup ecosystem uh, in Pakistan, and I, I believe in um, the wonderful opportunities that um, Pakistan has to bring when it comes to the the startup ecosystem. And uh, I also believe that there are many opportunities um, for you, for women, to um, to be part of uh, the, uh, the, the fun of being a founder. Um, I say it's fun, but it's also very hard. Um, in addition to running the entrepreneur experience for my division globally at uh, IBM, I uh, also am responsible for um, uh, student experience. So that means um, how do I, how do we empower uh, young people with the skills that they need to be prepared for the future of work? And we know that tech skills is a big piece of that. But I also focus on uh, entrepreneurial thinking and uh, personal and professional development. Uh, we're going to hear from uh, you're going to hear from me about some of the things that are very uh, you know near and dear to me in terms of uh, what has helped me succeed in my um, in my life. And we will also talk about um, uh, if you have questions. Um, we will also talk about some of the things that um, maybe you have questions about. Don't be shy. Don't don't be afraid to use the comments. I think it's uh, a lot more fun when we uh, have a presentation and uh, and you you join me in the presentation versus just listening. Okay. Um, at IBM, I also wear another hat. I am a, a judge in a competition that's called uh, Call for Code, 
And Call for Code is an initiative that is all about um, fighting back against um, the world's wickedest challenges. And what I mean by that is using technology or data science to create solutions that impact climate action, um, disaster scenarios, racial injustice, you know, all of the many things that um, we see highlighted in the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So the goals that have been set forth to help us make the world a better place and end poverty. I am both an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur. Uh, for those of you who don't know the word entrepreneurship, it is when you innovate inside of someone else's company instead of just your own. So I'm both a, uh, an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur. I have my own nonprofit. We've taught tens of thousands, tens of thousands of young people to code in 12 countries. Uh, we have a co-working space, a robotics lab, and an IoT lab in uh, in North Africa. And we also um, have two tech startups, both ed tech. Uh, one is about badges and certifications um, for um, uh, uh, working professionals or young people who um, are trying to figure out still what their their next career is going to be. It hasn't launched yet, but it will be launching soon, which I'm really excited about. Um, I also have a, a, an ed tech platform that's a gamified fun solution for being prepared for the future of work. It's not ready yet, but it will be soon. Um, so those are a few things about um, about you know the activities that I do inside of IBM as well as outside. Um, I worked at Microsoft for a number of years and I built internet and energy access solutions. I was an impact investor, um, you know, focused on, you know, the building blocks that we all need, internet, energy, to make meaningful use of the internet. So today I'm gonna share with you um, two different things. Um, one is gonna be personal branding and the second is gonna be imposter syndrome. So I'm gonna start off with personal branding. Let me just uh, share my screen. Give me one second. Okay. Hopefully you can see my screen. I'm gonna turn on the chat window so I can see. Um, can one of you let me know? Um, whether you can see it or not, I want to make sure that it's showing personal branding. It's perfectly visible. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay, cool. So we're going to get started. I'm going to move this down a little bit. Sometimes my camera gets all out of whack. Okay, good. Um, so this talk was really inspired by three of my, my colleagues and friends. Uh, one of them is uh, Docs Raymond Sai, who is a uh, chief marketing officer and also uh, technical himself. You know, he um, he wants uh, he used to not be good at, at presenting or public speaking and he was terrified and, you know, through practice now he is one of the best speakers that I, um, I, I, I ever see at any conference. He's amazing and once he was pulled into a meeting by one of his bosses and uh, he. <laughs> He, he, he made them lose the deal because he, he wasn't, he wasn't able to carry his own, he wasn't able to carry himself. He since learned that and now he's got one of the best personal brands out there that I know. Donna Sakar, who is a, um, both an engineer and an entrepreneur, she's an engineer at Microsoft and then um, she has her own fashion line. Uh, she's uh, an absolutely amazing woman. She also uh, has dyslexia and um, and openly speaks about uh, disabilities and how we all have different abilities and how you know you can have um, different abilities and still be a boss. And she is absolutely a boss. Uh, and then Mary Rodriguez, she's a master storyteller. Uh, she runs the internship program at Microsoft. Um, she's incredibly inspiring and just um, someone that. Uh, someone who I, I admire um, greatly. So all three of them have amazingly wonderful brands. Um, for those of you on Twitter, you can easily find them. Um, if we have a few minutes, I'll give you their Twitter handles because they're really wonderful to follow on Twitter. Um, what we're going to talk about today is how to navigate your own narrative in five easy steps. And this is really about telling your own story, you know, crafting your own narrative. Uh, if you're on Twitter, um, you can find me there. I'm going to put my um, 
my Twitter handle in the window. Oh, I missed the letter. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. That's the correct one. You can see it on the screen there. All right, perfect. So let's jump in. So first off, I want to thank uh, Sadaf and everyone from uh, from She Loves Tech Pakistan, including HBL and you know all of the all of the sponsors that have enabled um, uh, you to be part of this program, for me to be part of this program. I I, I believe in the work that Sadaf and her team is doing. Um, not only because I'm a proponent of um, gender equality and also uh, opportunities, but also tech. So um, it's, you know, brings a lot of my passions uh, together. And as I mentioned, I was in Pakistan three times last year and everyone um, went out of their way to make me feel uh, welcome, to make me feel at home. And uh, I do feel like when I come to Pakistan that I'm coming home. So um, thank you for, for being so hospitable. I think they always, you know, everyone always talks about the hospitality and the kindness of, uh, of Pakistanis when you go, uh, when you, when you, when you go visit. And I heard about this, but I really experienced it, you know, first, uh, like with my own eyes and it's, it's hard to put into um, words. So whatever it is that, that makes Pakistani people so, um, so uh, hospitable, keep doing what you're doing because I think there are a lot of uh, misconceptions in the world about what it means to travel to Pakistan. What 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 are are the Pakistani people all about? And I think um, for me, I always try to, you know, change the narrative that many people have um, about many parts of the world. You know, um, through travel, through culture, through food, through my own travels, so that I can, uh, in in a way, be a, a good ally and dispel you know any myths that people have about what it means to travel to other countries, you know, different than our own, different than mine. So thank you. And I'm not gonna tell you which biryani I like the best because I always end up finding that I, I create a fight somewhere. I might tell you at the end when I'm getting ready to leave. I think Sadaf already knows. <laughs> All right, cool. So um, essentially, if you follow these five steps, um, this will enable you to really create your own personal brand and control how others see you and describe you when you're not in the room. So who doesn't want to, who doesn't want to control what other people say about you when you're not in the room? We, we do, right? We want to know, we want to, we want to know what other people are saying and we want to control that, right? You know, we, we don't want people using a, a narrative that's different than what we want. So step one is really to find your superpower. I would like to know in the chat, does, it, does anybody know what their superpower is? Do you, do, you, do you have a superpower? I mean, we all have superpowers. We may not know what they are, but um, if you feel comfortable sharing, I'd love to know what your superpower is or, you know, what is that thing um, that you're known for? What do people know you for? Um, I'd like you to take a few minutes and I'd like you to go to your phone or your computer or your tablet. And I'd like you to Google your first and last name. I hope you're doing that because I'm going to pause for a minute while you do that. Did anybody find anything interesting? Or did you even find yourself? I bet some of you didn't find yourself. huh? Now I want you to Google me. So I'll put my first and last name in here. I hope you're doing it and following along. Tell me you are. <laughs> Tell me you are in the comments so I know that I'm not just sitting here looking silly. So hopefully you Googled yourself and maybe you found some stuff. Maybe you didn't. But when you Googled me, you found a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. And if you look at what you found about me, you found, hopefully this is what you think when you see that, is you see, um, yeah, so some people didn't find themselves, that's normal. That means you haven't established your personal brand, okay? And personal brands are both online and, and offline. Some of you found a lot of stuff, you know, but is it what you want to be there? Is it what you, what, what you want to see? 
you know, can somebody look at that and say, oh, that person is known for this, this, and this, you know? For me, you'll know that, I know I'm everywhere on Google. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know that you'll find um, things about uh, digital inclusion. Uh, you'll find things about startups and you'll find things about uh, inclusion. So inclusion of women and girls, right? Because I work on it and I work on it very hard. And one of the ways I work on it is by doing talks, writing blogs, just taking part in stuff, you know, um, volunteering. Most of everything came through volunteering. So the first step is really figuring out, you know, what are you known for? You know, or what is that one thing that you want to be known for? You know, maybe people don't know you for it, but it's something that you'd like to be known for. Now be realistic, you know, if you're not a rock star right now, the chances of, of you um, and you don't know how to sing, <laughs> the chances are, you know, people are not going to start recognizing you as a rock star if you don't know how to sing. So think about or play a guitar or something crazy like that, you know? So know yourself, think about what your strengths are or what your strength is, um, but be authentic, you know, be yourself. Cause how many people have we met, you know, where you feel like they've got this barrier up and, you know, there's just something about them, right? You know? We don't, we don't always enjoy being around people where we feel like, I don't know, that person's got something going on. They're not transparent. I've, I've worked with people who you feel like they're, they've got a shell around them. And they're not, and you feel like they, they have this persona that they create at work. And you know they're different outside of work. You know people like that? I do. It always makes you feel kind of weird, right? Like, okay, wait a second. When I see you here, you're like this. When I see you there, you're like that. Like, what's going on? You know? <laughs> so be you. Be you. So, you know, always know your audience. You know, think about who's listening. You know, the way that I might talk about a certain topic in Facebook with my friends, my family, might be a little bit different than how I talk in Instagram or how I, how I tweet. You know, my friend Donna, she uses um, Facebook only for her family and talks about her trips and stuff like that. And Instagram is mostly her fashion. And in Twitter, it's either a combination of fashion or tech. You know, she, she knows her audience and she crafts her messages accordingly. You know, we know that we don't always apply the same language, you know, everywhere we go. So for example, when I talk in LinkedIn, I'm a little bit more formal in LinkedIn than I am in Twitter. Um, but either way, speak. And when I say speak, that means both online and offline. And that could be, you know, writing a blog that could be and, and meaningful stuff. We'll talk about that in a, in a, in a, in a bit, um, but be authentic, you know, don't be afraid to, to be vulnerable, you know, tell relevant stories, share and write, you know, um, always act with empathy though. Be prepared to teach and inspire others, but either way, just be. You know, um, so I'll tell you in a, in, a, in a bit why I, I do the work I do, and it'll be a vulnerable story. It'll give you insight into why I do what I do, why I show up the way I show up, and also why I work so much, because a lot of people ask me, oh my gosh, you're always working. You'll understand why. Everybody's got why. So step three is be there, be consistent and just show up. You know, I once um, participated in this coloring contest and I was like third grade, you know? So I was like a small little kid and I had to color this bunny rabbit and it was for like a, a holiday in the US. And so I, 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 I colored this bunny and I turned the bunny in to the store to win the prize and 
and I, I won the prize. I won $50, which in, um, in my town at that time, $50 was, was a lot for me, you know? Um, obviously things change and maybe $50 for a, for a young, for a young kid in Pakistan is also a lot, but it was a lot for me and I was so excited and I went to the store, I spent the money and I got candies and games and all kinds of stuff. And I asked them like, how many, how many entered the coloring contest? And the lady told me, you were the only one who entered. So Sometimes you can actually be a superstar by only by being the only one who shows up, you know, I'm not a great color. I'm not a great artist, but I won that $50 because nobody showed up, you know, and so that happens a lot of times, you know, I, um, I often find that when you volunteer to do things, it also helps to build your personal brand because it helps to show you as a leader. And you can write about all of that stuff. You know, and it, it's easy now to, 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 to write. You know, you've got opportunities in LinkedIn, you've got opportunities in Medium. You know, there's so many different places where you can, where you can write and share. You know, one example of something that you could do is after the session, right? What did I learn about personal branding? And what is my commitment to building my personal brand? Take part in social media. Now, I know a lot of people ask about, you know, what about cyberbullying? You know, um, it's real. And I do have trolls and haters and people who come and say nasty things or rude things. Um, it's something that does happen, but I think um, know how to deal with that and that's don't engage, block. There's no sense in engaging. Anytime I, uh, I have someone who says something nasty or something inappropriate, I block them and I move on. But take part in events, events like this, you know, programs like this, be present, you know, write about each and every, every workshop that you have, write about it, say some words about it. What did you learn? How are you going to go and apply those things later? Are there some things that you can share with others that, that you learned that they may not have um, had access to before that can help them? Be a better person, maybe, but be useful. You know, um, I don't. I don't know how many of you have a uh, have your own website. Do any of you have your own website? I, I have my own website. I have a million websites, uh, a million URLs actually. But I need to do a better job. I need to do a better job using all of them. Uh, I have one for melissasafi.org, but I haven't uh, done anything with it yet. It's my plan. I plan to do something with it. Um, but create your own website. You know, this is a great way. Like if you're thinking about your CV and how do you want to build your CV, this is a great way of demonstrating your experience. You know, what a better way for people to see who you are, what you are, what you know, what you've done in a way that, you know, kind of brings it to life, you know, in a, um, in, in color and you have to put it on your on your CV and it allows you to control your own it, it allows you to control it you know sometimes I write a lot under IBM um, but I also write things elsewhere because I know that when I write in the world of IBM it's something that's posted in IBM and IBM can do anything with anything they want to with it you know and then all of a sudden my, my brand is is gone right um, but Either way, build your brand. And that doesn't just mean online, it's offline as well. It's making sure that your online persona matches your offline persona. Um, identify your industry peers. You know, um, look around the people who are with you in this talk. You know, those are your peers. You know, engage with them. You know, set goals to expand your network. And actually do it like how many times do we go even if it's a virtual conference you know or think about when we were all going to conferences we meet people or you you meet somebody new maybe not at a conference or a summit or something professional you know you meet someone new and you just don't follow up you know be proactive you know set a goal of meeting x number of new people maybe it's just one new person a month you know not all of us feel comfortable you know meeting new people right um and not everybody um, feels very comfortable, you know, um, you know, uh, kind of speaking out and, and um, 
you know, meeting new people. It's, it's hard for some of us. Uh, for me, I, it, it's not hard for me. It's something I thrive on, but I, I do empathize, you know, with people who are, you know, more reserved or might feel less comfortable uh, in certain settings. But make a point to come out of your comfort shell, even if just, even if it's just once a month. You know, it's, it can be contagious. Be prepared to learn from others and share what you learn. You know, um, this again goes back to blogging and videos and figuring out how you can share your skills forward. Most importantly, when it comes to building your personal brand, be a friend, you know, be there when people need you. And it's hard to be everywhere, you know? And I'm not saying that that means, you know, donating money to every single person who asks you to help them, you know, Lending a hand can come in many, many different ways. You know, I have a lot of people who ask me for donations and I don't donate to everybody. I can't, even if I wanted to, you know? And so I've learned, you know, how can I lend a helping hand, but how can I balance that with what I can and cannot do? You know, um, I get a lot of questions from a lot of people and some of them just are not meant for me to answer, you know? And sometimes I'm like, you know what? I don't think I'm the right person to answer this, but here's a place you can go to maybe get more information. You know, especially with young people who, um, you know, might be still trying to find their way. Um, so one of the questions is, um, how was your experience at IBM while working at working in a job, being an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur? Um, I was very upfront with them. And I know that uh, in some parts of the world, um, and I suspect Pakistan is one of them based on some of the conversations uh, I've had that it's really hard for employers to see that it's okay for you to be an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur. And sometimes they look for you to, you know, sign agreements that you won't compete. I just personally don't believe in that. I think I should be able to work and do as long as there's no conflicts. And as long as I'm not hurting anyone, I, I should be able to have my own company, have my own side hustles, have my own hustles, and also be a good employee. And I'm thankful that coming into um, IBM, I've made that very, very, very clear. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur. Don't ask me to leave my side endeavors because I won't do it, you know? And it's taken a while, you know, in my life to get to that point where I feel comfortable saying that. Um, and I think part of that is I built my personal brand. I know what my superpowers are, you know? and other people know that I have a personal brand. Other people know that I've, you know, I've created my superpower and I have my things. Now they see it as a value instead of a distraction. But build unique um, emotional connections. I always try to emotionally connect with others. Um, that requires emotional intelligence. You know, how do you know yourself? How do you know others? How do you read yourself? How do you read others? How do you create better, you know, better, better relationships by managing yourself and those around you. Um, but empower others to share their story, you know, ask them, you know, what is it that brought you here today? So I'll ask you if you feel comfortable, you know, what brought you to, what brought you to Circle Women? What brought you to She Loves Tech Pakistan? Why are you here? Does anybody want to share? Mm -hmm. It's okay if you don't. All right. But, you know, as you're empowering people, think about empowering them with empathy. You know, like what, what connects the two of you together? What connects you to that group? What group, what, what, what is it that connects that group to you? You know, what is it that you can do to make others shine? You know, but ultimately emotionally connect. Um, I always encourage others to be authentic, to be themselves, and it's contagious. You know, the kinds of things people open up to me about sometimes is crazy, where I'm like, oh, I can't believe they told me that. Um, but, you know, I think part of that is because um, no matter how successful I may be in my career and in my, in my life, and not everything is success, not everything is great, that's for sure, um, I'm approachable, you know, and... I enable others to be vulnerable around me, to be authentic. And you can be vulnerable and powerful at the same time. You know, sometimes showing your vulnerability in, a, in the right way can actually be powerful. 
And you'll see that in a second. So now we're going to talk about how I turned my personal brand into something. And I followed these steps. So first off, I turned my worst nightmare into my superpower. So I'm going to show you my vulnerability. My vulnerability is that 13 years ago, my children and I became victims of parental kidnapping. So my children were taken from me 13 years ago and I never got them back. Now I know where they are. They're healthy, they're safe, they're normal children but I was not able to get them out of the country where my ex-husband took them, his home country. Tunis, Tunisia. So sandwiched in between Algeria and Libya and North Africa. And when I, I wasn't able to get them back for a variety of reasons, mostly bureaucracy, red tape and corruption, I decided I would play the long game. And what I mean by that is I would show my kids that I love them. I would be a mother from afar. I would come and visit them when I could. I would teach myself to, I would teach myself to speak their dialect. So I speak Arabic, um, but a North African version of Arabic. And I taught myself by hanging out with people who spoke the dialect because this dialect is not a written dialect. And it's not a dialect you can go to school and learn. It's very different than, uh, many of the, the dialects that exist in the Arabic language. I started a company in his country. And what, what started all of that? Actually, I started three companies in his country. Um, what started all of this um, was really one day my daughter saying to me, mommy, mommy, I'm learning Microsoft. And at the time I was working at Microsoft and I was like, oh, that's really cool. You know, what are you learning? And I realized she was learning Word in her classroom without access to a computer. Just there's like a clunky old one that the kids would go up and, you know, file, type, dot, 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 you know, learning. And I thought, how can these young people, and they only had one for like 40 kids. And, and this is, you know, you, you all live in Pakistan. You see many, many young people without access to technology. Um, and you also see many young people outside of the school system, even without COVID-19, yeah? So you know this problem very well. For me, I thought, I, I may not be able to change the world, but I can, I can change this classroom. And so I set it on a mission to bring uh, computers into this classroom, and I went from looking for 30 computers to bringing 400 computers to 20 schools across the country. And I also realized that there was a disconnect between um, having access to technology and having the skills to make meaningful use of that technology in front of them. And so I started researching what does it mean to be digitally literate and realized there was no global definition of what it means to be digitally literate. So I started researching. Um, I'm working on my PhD now. I'm in the final stage. I'm preparing to defend uh, my, my mm -hmm. thesis uh, in, the, in the coming months. So I've already completed my research. It's on the digital inclusion of underserved communities mm -hmm. and specifically indigenous communities. So people in the United States who lack access to the internet and live in uh, dig indigenous tribes. So live on Native American reservations, which is a big problem in the US. But I connected that work to um, Kind of thinking about what if there was a, a global standard for digital literacy you know and I, I i came up with this idea of approaching the ieee and saying to the ieee hey what if we had this global standard i'm pleased to announce to announce that this week there is now the first global standard for what it means to be digitally literate and it was my idea so this is how I think um, I used my, my worst nightmare to fuel my, su my superpower. And how do these two things connect? They connect because I realized that for me, access to my children and the ability to be a mother came from the internet, came from digital skills. If my kids didn't have access to a device, access to the internet and access to digital skills, then they wouldn't have connection to their mom. Now, I'm not saying that everybody has, you know, such a deep connection to technology that it enables them to, you know, to be a mom, you know? Um, my, you know, my motherhood for me is very different than motherhood for most women. 
we work with the things that are put in front of us, the roadblocks that are put in front of us. But I thought I'm not going to be that person who feels, um, you know, sad or dis you know, is disparaged about, you know, this bad thing happened to me. Oh, my kids were kidnapped. Now the rest of the world is gonna go. No, I decided how do I use this to fuel something bigger than me? Because what I was working on this project, you know, to get the computers and thinking about digital skills, it gave me new life. And it gave me the ability to concentrate on something else. Same thing with my PhD work. And by the way, I'm doing it online. Um, I don't have time to show up in a, uh, in a university. So I'm doing it online and I've created my own mentors, which is pretty cool. Um, so I do things very, un, you know, untraditional. And that's, you know, mainly because I believe that um, rules are someone else's. Yeah. So, so you can, you know, when you Google me, this is probably some of the things that you saw. So you saw, you know, videos from Microsoft. And could you um, mute your phones, please, if that's okay? I, I hear someone who hasn't muted and it's a little distracting. Excuse me. I have a question. Can you, can you, hello? I'm just going to go through and mute people. So give me one second if I can. Okay, that should be good now. Thank you. All right, cool. So if you Googled me, this is some of the stuff that you that you found, you know, so, you know, you don't really see the whole, wow, Melissa's kids were kidnapped, you know, maybe if you open up a few of these, you'll see my story. You know, if you watch this, um, this uh, code the curve video that Microsoft made about me uh, in July, I talk about it. So Again, know your audience, you know, who are you talking to, who are you talking with? You know, I work with heads of state, I work with ministers, UN officials, but I also work with students and I work with out of school youth. I work with a lot of different people. I adjust my message and my style. However, my lens is always the same. I'm authentic, I'm transparent, I'm approachable. I tell emotionally relevant stories. So the story I told you, very emotional, right? It's, it makes me vulnerable. Now I've told it enough that I'm not going to cry and my voice is not shaky because, you know, I've gotten over it. Um, but, you know, it's really important for us to, you know, think about how do we bring the fluffier side of life into, um, into everything. And I, and Muhammad asks, you know, why a, uh, a software engineer should learn branding. You need to understand your audience. If you are going to go out and build something, you need to understand your audience and what they want, like, think, feel. And ultimately, most of the jobs lately that I've gotten, it came to me because of my personal brand. You know, I have people come who will approach me, hey, Melissa, I saw you're doing, you do this webcast thing. I was asked to do a webcast. I'm wondering, can I hire you to help me figure out how to do this? And I, I realized like, I know how to do that. And this just happened to me this week. I didn't, I didn't realize that that was something that someone would pay me to do. A friend of mine said, hey, I got this job where I'm gonna be doing this, 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 and this. This is a part that I don't know how to do. Can you help me? And by the way, I'll pay you. I'm like, okay, all right, this is good. And it came from, from my personal brand. Um, so uh, Ashar says, um, how did you manage your studies while doing this wonderful experience in different companies and brands? What is the best thing um, that makes you different, um, uh, different than before? So I think for me, I've always been someone who enjoys working on a lot of things at the same time. That's just how I am. And not everybody's like that. Not everybody is like, oh, I'm working on this and this and this and this, you know. Also, I don't have my kids here, you know, so I can work, I can work a lot more. I can do a lot more because I don't have, you know, I don't have the um, extra, let's say, um, you know, things that have to be done to take kids to school or make sure kids are, are, are learning, you know, cook dinner. If I cook dinner, I'm cooking for myself. And, you know, of course, that's, you know, being you know, living alone is not always, you know, uh, the most wonderful thing 
you know, I have a lot of friends. I spend a lot of time, you know, with, um, you know, my family and my friends and studying and doing, but, you know, for me, I get my energy from staying busy. And so that's why I study, I work, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, I'm going to read a, a, a text from, uh, this came from the cultural attache of the, Tuni the, the U.S. Embassy in Tunisia. We were interviewing high school girls for our tech women exchange program today. And when I asked one who she thought the most inspirational woman in tech in the world is, she said you. And then my response is in blue. Oh my God, I might cry. It's not the first time your name has come up in interviews as a favorite woman leader. I also asked the question about women role models for a young women's leadership program we interviewed for a few months ago. You've made such an impact on lives of young Tunisians. I read this because Tunisia is where my ex-husband is from. You know, this is the person who kidnapped my children. And instead of looking at it and, and hating this country and hating the people and hating everything that came from there, I could have taken that path, right? But I thought, no, what can I do to empower people with opportunities and skills what can I do to empower my children and the people who are growing up in their community to show that you can have something bad happen to you and you can overcome that and you can build things around it. You know, I didn't want to be known for the person who got her kids kidnapped. I wanted to be known for this. So you can see on the far left, there's a, a, the guy with the mask. He's actually the, the prime minister of a small island country off of Africa called uh, Cape Verde. And this is him talking about one of my events. You know, IBM has done a lot of um, posting about my activities to their 8 million people. The UN called me IBM's chief penguin. So again, be there and be consistent always show up. I've been to 52, I did 52 events in 10 countries last year. You know, I usually impact about 20,000 people every single year with digital inclusion, entrepreneurship, startups, youth empowerment, gender inclusion. And I always bring my personal side. Now I didn't build my personal website yet, but there you go. This is a collection of my favorite, you know, a bunch of my favorite experiences this year. You know, again, figure out who your industry peers are you know, make meaningful lasting connections with them, set goals. You know, I always follow up and I, I really find a common ground, ground between us of learning, advocating, sponsoring, mentoring, and doing reverse mentoring. So I have a lot of young people who actually mentor me. Build unique and special relationships. So think about what is that emotional connection that brings you to that person? <laughs> There we go. I muted that person too. <laughs> um, you know, so think about empathy, you know, think about the stories that you can tell. How do you find common ground with others? How do you inspire others to shine? And how do you share your thoughts openly? So again, you can find me on Twitter at Mentor Africa with a K. What do you think about this uh, this session? Good, insightful. Did you learn something? Yes, mom. That's really nice. Awesome. Thank you. All right, give me one second because I got some. What questions do you have while I'm uh, while I'm working on my um, sharing? Good. Good stuff. Okay, hey, I've got something else that I want to share with you really quickly. I'm going to go through this one rather fast. I wanted to spend more time on that one. This one's pretty simple, so forgive me for going through this really fast, but I want to go through it. Okay, um, on the screen, can you see, um, is it in full screen mode or no? Uh, 
Um, can you see two slides or one slide, if you don't mind telling me? Slide. Sorry, there's one, just one? Yes, just one. Yes. Oh, good. Okay. All right, cool. I've got two monitors, so sometimes it doesn't come, come through right. Okay, cool. So we're going to talk about um, imposter syndrome. Um, I'm going to go through this fast because I want to um, make sure that you've got um, a good understanding of, of this. I got this from my, my friend Donna. She wrote a book on imposter syndrome, and I just love her to bits. So think about it, this. You know, um, was there a huge mistake? Did you get to where you are by accident? Does that ever go through your mind? I know it goes through mine sometimes. You know, just remember you're not succeeding by accident. My mentor, Susan, and other successful mentors tell us, you know, feeling like this is normal. You know, actually, um, there are a lot of famous um, uh, people who um, have imposter syndrome. So Sheryl Sandberg from uh, Facebook, Howard Schultz from Starbucks, Seth Godin, who's a writer, and they're always afraid that somebody's gonna call them a hack. Neil Armstrong, first guy to walk on the moon, um, he was at this Nobel Peace Prize you know, party, and when he was there, he looked around, and he was like, wow, all these people made amazing things, and I just went to where I was told. You know, um, oh, my picture's gone. This is supposed to be Tom Hanks. I don't know what happened to the picture. So pretend like that little squiggle is Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks actually has imposter syndrome. Um, so are you ready to admit? Is this you? Do you feel like an imposter? Do you feel that you're as good as the people around you? Or that good thing that happened to you, was it dumb luck? Were you in the right place at the right time? Well, I'm here to tell you that you deserve a seat at the table. I was recently called out for being an imposter. I did it. I did this presentation in Pakistan and um, my friend uh, helped me with the presentation and uh, gave me some of the content and and the person on social media said you're an imposter that's not your content. I'm like yeah duh I got it from Donna and Donna knows it and Donna helped me with it. So she called me an imposter. Oh it was kind of mood. So you're not faking it. I mean, maybe we were faking it in those glasses there, but you're not faking it. I am currently impostering my way through IBM. You know, what do I know about mainframes and, you know, data protection, privacy and security? You know what? I'm learning. So now I can talk to you about, you know, IBM Z technology. I can tell you that, you know, uh, a mainframe is uh, secure. It's always on and it's scalable, right? I can talk to you about that. Uh, before I couldn't. So first thing, you know, that when you think about imposter syndrome is to think about what are you unqualified to do? A lot of that's imaginary. A lot of that you really, you know, you're really qualified to do. You know, what will you lose out on if you don't do the thing, whatever that thing is? You know, so if you decide that, you know what, I'm not going to do this because I think I'm an imposter. Will others be better off? Probably not. So really think about, you know, what are the parts that you're qualified to do and what do you suck doing? What are you not good at doing? You know, I'm good at building startups. I'm good at empowering communities. I'm good at advocating for the underserved and I'm good at evangelizing digital inclusion. Excuse Where am I bad? I am uh, terrible at expense reports. <laughs> I can't un understand. Can you make it simple? I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't understand your words. Can you explain in simple words, please? Okay. Um, so, you know, I think part of this is, um, you know, what are you, what are you, what are you qualified to do? Or what are you good at? You know, what, what do you know how to do? You know, what are your strengths? After that, you know, who are the people who are qualified or who are the people who um, know how to do these things that you don't know how to do? Who can be your mentors? Who can help you? These are some of mine. Always start small. And I think this is the same for your um, personal branding is start small. 
you know, you're not going to take a crash course in conquering the world. <laughs> you know, think about when you reach out to someone for help, how do you reach out to them for help? Do it in a way where, you know, you show admiration for their work. You ask them a question. And you ask your question. For those of you who ever are on social media, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, never, never, ever, ever reach out to someone and just say, hi, and then wait. Don't do that. Come in. Hi, I have a question for you. Here is my question. Is this something you can help me with? Or do you mind helping me? Don't be that guy, that girl. Especially when you're reaching out to someone you don't know. So don't compare yourself against others. You know, different people have different, you know, experiences. Compliment them. Elevate them. It's, uh, it's uh, contagious and it feels good. It feels much better than feeling bad because you are not that person. Or, you know, I, I never look at it and think, wow, Donna's, old, Donna's younger than me, but she ha has been more successful with her business and her career. And her personal brand is on fire. No, I'm not jealous. I admire it. And I elevate her. Most importantly, be an and and not an or. I talked to you about being an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur. Don't feel like you need to choose between a, being a storyteller and a software and an engineer. Why do you need to choose both? Why do you need to choose one over the other? Do both. Think about what advice you'd give a friend. Write that down and actually do that. How many times do people ask us? you know, for advice, we give them advice. And then when the same thing happens to us, we do exactly the opposite. Don't do that. <laughs> Gather your squad, text them often. And this doesn't mean the haters. This doesn't mean the negative Nancy's or the negative people in your life who are there to inspire you, to empower you, to help you be a better person. Sometimes you win. Yeah, you fail sometimes, but I don't call it failure if you learn. Write about it. What's something you failed at? And most importantly, do the thing, whatever that thing is. Again, Donna wrote a book about um, imposter syndrome, which um, I have here. I don't know if you can get it in Pakistan or not, um, but uh, Donna's amazing and you can find a lot of her material online, even her TED talk where she talks about imposter syndrome. And again, you can find me on Twitter at Mentor Africa with a K. All right. What questions do we have? So how can we start? How can we do a startup with just an idea? Ooh, um, well, you need to be, build a business plan. Um, I would recommend um, going out and doing something called the business model canvas. The business model canvas is a really wonderful tool for helping you um, look at, you know, what's the problem you're solving? Who is your audience? How are you going to make money? What's your solution? But just, I would also do some reading about design thinking. Um, the most successful ideas are built with audience, um, you know, ideas in mind. All right. All right. What questions do you have? You said lots of things happen by accident. I'm sorry. I have a question, man. So my friends from uh, from Circle, um, I could go on and do another talk on uh, on startups, but um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of questions. Do you have some uh, some questions that you would like to ask, uh, man? Yeah. 
Uh, you said lots of things happen by accident, but can you please tell us what matters more, like hard working or the luck? Because luck does matter. Uh, if someone is uh, hard working day and night, but he has bad luck, then he's not going to be successful people. Can you repeat the question? I, it, it's, there you, you have a little bit of background noise, so I didn't hear it all the way. I'm sorry for your disturbance. My, uh, my question is, you said, Ma'am, you said uh, something happens by accident, like uh, you have one slide that that is uh, written on uh, many of the things happen by accident. But someone having the bad luck and he's uh, working hard day and night, how would he manage that? Um, he's not going to be a successful person. You know, I think I think everyone has their own. Um, I think everyone has their own. Um, uh, you know, kind of um, threshold of, you know, work and personal. And what is right for, you know, one person is not always right for somebody else, you know? And it's very hard to say, if you don't do this, you won't be successful. I, I, I don't believe in those kinds of statements. Um, because, sorry? Mama, I also don't believe these things, but I mean to say simply that luck does matter a lot. Hmm. Yeah, I think everybody has to find their own, their own threshold and their own um, kind of uh, what's right for them, you know? Like what's right for me may be very wrong for you. And what might be right for you might be very wrong for me. You know what I mean? Um, so how can we make a, a brand stand out from the rest? Um, I think that the way of making a brand stand out is by knowing your audience and talking to your audience. So that's really kind of thinking about design thinking. I have a presentation on design thinking, um, and I think it might be really interesting for all of you. Um, so for my circle team, have you done any, any training sessions on uh, design thinking yet? Uh, not yet, but we have one plan for uh, 30th October. Oh, okay. So, um, I'm going to pull up like one slide. Um, I just want to get it real quick and um, I won't uh, present it because I don't want to um, uh, uh, mess up the, the one that's coming. Um, but I want, there's one slide I want to pull up and it's the design thinking process. So let me just grab it from my, um, from my computer. I'm just looking for it now. Um, yeah, and in my that. mind, this great. is how you make your brand stand out. Oh, here it is. Okay, this is what I wanted to show. Okay, give me one second. And ultimately, you can't have enough information about design thinking. So let me just share my screen. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask. Hello. Uh huh. Uh, I want to ask what is a design thinking approach? What should we approach? So for design thinking, uh, what's the question? Yeah. So uh, what, what should be a, what should be approach for a, a design thinking? Uh, what, like what, 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 what should you use design thinking for? Uh, in business, uh, like te uh, tech. Everywhere. You use it everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, you use it everywhere. Um, uh, let me just tell you, uh, and I know you've got a session coming up on this, so I don't want to um, take away from that wonderful session that's going to come soon. But design thinking okay. is all about empathy, and it's about um, understanding your customer and understanding others around you. Um, and it starts off with empathizing with your audience. And this is really important in branding and product development because 
if you don't listen to your customer, if you don't empathize with your customer and define your customer wants, needs, frustrations, and aspirations, you're not going to be able to uncover what that secret sauce is for your brand or your product. Um, and it's really important to kind of ideate with your team and with your customers to really challenge your assumptions and come up with creative and innovative you know, ideas and solutions. Um, and then it kind of leads into prototyping, which is about doing, you know, creating some small solution and then testing your solution. This is really important in product development, uh, whether you're building a mobile application, building a website, um, building a business, building a marketing campaign, you know, talking to your audience and knowing your audience is, um, is essential in everything that um, everything that we will, that you do, you know, when it comes to business, it's, um, incredibly, incredibly powerful. Oh, okay. So it looks like you'll have design thinking, um, in a, in a different planned workshop. So do you want me to do, is it okay? Um, my circle women, um, colleagues, do you want me to go through the design thinking a little bit? I think it's relevant based on some of the conversations that are oh, yeah, happening. Do. Yeah, it's okay. It's going to be a different audience for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so all right, this is great then. Let me go to the, let me go to the beginning then. Um, I didn't want to mess up anything that someone else was doing. So give me one second. This is one of my favorite presentations because it's um, so applicable everywhere. So um, business criteria for making an online brand or a small brand. Pay attention, Ashar. This is what it is. <laughs> this is the this is what this is what it is. Uh, or this is how you get this is how you get there. I'm going to save some bandwidth, so I'm going to turn off my video for now, but I'm, I'm still here. Um, all right, cool. So um, you already know me. Um, so design thinking is really um, human centered techniques that help us solve problems. And it's really a way of gaining, um, you know, having the, having the ability to, um, you know, assign a kind of a systematic way of getting access to insights. And it teaches others, you know, how we can learn from the world around us. So I mentioned to you that I spent a lot of time in Pakistan. And when I was in Pakistan, I did my best to try to understand, you know, people around me. Now I don't understand everything, but I did my best, you know, and I made a point of trying to understand. You know, uh, design thinking is used everywhere in academia, companies. It's actually something you can use in your, in your real life as well. It's about understanding your audience. It's about challenging your assumptions and observing and developing empathy. Because what you're trying to do is, if you're trying to solve a problem, we need to identify different strategies, different ways of thinking. We need to think about, you know, our audience, their problems. You know, that helps us to see different kinds of solutions so that we, you know, can create products or solutions that really align to um, the audience wants and needs. Now, you know, in order to really, you know, utilize uh, design thinking, we need to define what problem, it, you know, what problem are we trying to solve? So for example, I have a platform at IBM and I wanna build a better experience around it. So my problem is, you know, um, so my problem statement is that you know, or my, if I think about my design thinking hat, it's I want to build a better experience around master the mainframe. So this is a, a, a tool that's used in, in IBM and I'm currently getting ready to kick off a design thinking workshop around it. I'm a big fan of doing brainstorming sessions. Um, I think that it helps people get a lot of uh, creative ideas out there and, you know, new ideas that, um, I think people might not have, um, you know, thought about previously, um, gets people creative, you know, because it's easier to, you know, tone down a really wild and crazy idea than to think up a new one. You know, but ultimately you got to know the problem that you're trying to solve when you're going to go and deploy any kind of design thinking uh, process. 
um, when I'm doing these brainstorming sessions, you know, I usually, you know, write stuff down. I might draw pictures. Um, ultimately, you want to share everything with the group, and it might be through sticky notes or a picture board or a whiteboard. And you can do some of this stuff online. Um, there is a, a free tool that you can use. It's called. Let me just get the. I'm going to get the website, and I'll put it in the. I'll put it in the chat. So give me one second. Oh no, I don't think that's it. Hold on. I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. It's a whiteboarding tool. It's really cool. So it's a great place to collaborate and it's free. All right, let me go back to my presentation. There we go. So that's a cool one that I like to, to use for brainstorming. But when you're thinking about, you know, uh, building a team, building a company, make sure people look different than you or are different than you. It might be ages, experiences, genders, you know, whether you're male or female, be inclusive. You know, think about people with different backgrounds and abilities. And again, it's just different ways of thinking and looking at the world. You know, if you're thinking about doing a, a brainstorming session, you know, just make sure you're nice. <laughs> Sometimes people come up with ideas that you may not like, you know, um, be visual, encourage weird stuff, you know, start with the problem. You have lots of ideas, build from others. You know, don't forget to sign, assign someone who's going to help you take notes. But ultimately, you want to make sure that you're being inclusive. Again, not everybody feels um, you know, comfortable speaking out. So one of the question is, does it matter to have good graphics or design on a brand page or website while advertising the brand? Of course. Okay, I think somebody keeps muting me, but um, can you hear me now? Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, all right, cool. Um, so, you know, as you're kind of taking in feedback, you know, incorporate the feedback, you know, um, because it's gonna be, it's gonna be less costly to prevent a mistake or to correct a mistake than to fail miserably. Okay, fine, you might learn something out of it, but oh, Evaluate often so you don't fail. Design thinking is really for everyone, whether you're a designer, a freelancer, a founder, a developer. It's for anyone and everyone. Same thing with prototype. It's just like a, like a little experiment. You know, what, what is your product going to look like, right? Um, we already talked about the process a second ago. This is one of the design thinking processes. There are many. Depends on who you talk to. There are lots of them. But ultimately, it's about challenging the norm, thinking outside in, and thinking about things differently than you would normally think about them on your own. You know, be imaginative. Again, this goes back to storytelling. You know, what are those outlandish, wild, weird, and different things that would break the norm? Liberate yourself from the same old, same old. What is it that you could do to change the norm? That's how great ideas come about, is through innovation. Well, we know that lots of people build cool stuff. Yeah, that's right. We know that smart people build cool stuff. That's right, too. But do they talk to their audience? Like the people who would actually use the product? If they don't, that's a problem, right? Talking to your audience is essential. 
because we all want to make cool things. But what if we make a cool thing and nobody wants to use our cool thing? So innovation is really about people's desire to use something. They find it feasible and viable. That's innovation. So they can use it, they want to use it, and it works. So we already talked about what design thinking is. It really is just a systematic way for problem solving. And it helps you create new and different, new innovative ideas. It helps you tell stories. And all you need are people, space, space can be virtual, a process, and that leads you all to innovation. So what do we mean by design? Is it making pretty things? It's not making pretty things. It's solving a problem. It's identifying unmet needs. It's creating joy. And it's resolving audience pain points. In order to do that, you need to think about who's got the problem. Why do they have the problem? And how are others trying to solve that problem? You know, what are the components of that problem? What are you going to do to test, to learn, to iterate, to ask, and to listen so that you can find that golden door? You know, you want to know things like what worked, what didn't work. You know, adapt to what fits your audience needs. This is a different way of showing design thinking. But it's the same overall process. You're understanding, you're observing, you're defining, ideating, prototyping, and testing. So empathy is key throughout all of this. And there's a question, what is the best source of learning design thinking online? I'm going to give you the best source, um, and I'll give you the website for it as well. Um, IBM has a whole free sort, uh, course, and it's free. And you get badges, so it's really good. Um, so it's a constant loop of observing, reflecting, and making. Because ultimately, you want to fail fast. You want to fail cheap. You want to fail better. But remember, if you learned, you really didn't fail. So if we think about the components that we had previously, you know, it's, and this goes, it, it, this is the same for any business. It's um, how do you build a good team? How do, how do you identify your audience? You're not going to be able to tell great stories, build great products if you don't know who your audience is. If you don't know what they're, if you don't have, you know, a plan, if you don't have a timeline, if you're not focused, if you haven't validated your assumptions with real people. And sometimes we need to shift. You know, you hear a lot of people talking about pivoting. But ultimately, again, you got to go out and do the thing. The only person that's stopping you from doing the thing is you. You want to share your ideas openly with no fear, you know. Um, I know it's scary sometimes to share your ideas. But how can you do that with no fear? And how can you inspire others to share with no fear? Don't be afraid to change. Don't be afraid if you started something, you launched something and it didn't work out, you can change. Create choices for yourself. You know, this kind of stuff will help you think big. You know, when you're going through and brainstorming and thinking about all the different ideas, think quantity first, a lot of ideas. You know, you can think about quality later. You know, you might get a lot of doors in front of you. 
And you might open one door and find there are a lot of other doors behind there until you get to that golden door. Your answer. But think big and narrow things down. They'll, they'll narrow them down over time. One important thing is when you're telling stories or you're building a product or running a business or creating a startup, you're probably not your audience. So don't forget that you're probably not your audience. Find your customers, go talk to them. You know, talk to your friends, talk to people who would use your product. Ask them what they think, listen to them, empathize with them, but ultimately talk to them, talk with them. Document what you learned, you know, um, when you had that conversation, what if he or she, or what do they say? What, what do they think? How did they, how did, how, how did they feel? Take them down on sticky notes. Great stories come from uh, just talking to others and learning their stories and learning from them. Make sense of what you wrote down. You know, did you have quotes? Are there actions that they're taking? Expectations, reactions, what are their values? You know, your values might be different than mine and my values might be different than yours. The way you react to something might be different than the way I react to something. My expectations might be different than yours. I may not even understand your expectations. The things that I say might be very different than yours. So it's really important that we are always talking, you know, as you're going through this and you're thinking about product testing, for example, or thinking about testing out your new startup, you know, you're going to have, you're going to, pain points are going to come about. Focus there. You know, what can you do to resolve, you know, pain points if you're thinking about building a product or a business, right? You know, identify one problem. You know, can you map out that person's life? How can you get focused? So if you remember previously, there are a bunch of sticky notes all over the place. What can you do to organize them? You can see here, here are the steps. Here's what they're doing. Here's what they're thinking. And here's what they're feeling. So imagine you built a mobile application and it's version one and you want to test it out. What are the steps that they're taking? Home screen, you know, account setup you know, whatever, whatever those other pages might be. What are they doing there? What are they thinking? How are they feeling? Map out your customer journey. You know, when we say pain points, what does that mean? Obviously things that are painful, things that are slow. Like imagine, you know, the times where you've, you know, been in a website and something didn't work the way you needed it to. It's frustrating, right? Or it's confusing. How many times have we knew, learned a new platform and it's really hard and it, it, it is confusing and it's challenging or sometimes when our internet is not working slow, you know, or we've been part of things that, oh, this is scary or this makes me feel uncomfortable. You know, how can you resolve those with whatever your product is? You know, as you think about setting up those phases and what people are doing, what people are thinking, what people are feeling, how can you highlight some things to focus on? All right, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to fix this one first. Then I'm going to fix that one. Then I'm going to fix that one. And I'm going to fix that one. It goes into your roadmap. You know, ultimately, things will get more organized because you'll be able to clearly see the pain points, the opportunities the inefficiencies and the confusion. Again, this is really good for, you know, trying to figure out product market fit. And that means when you're, you know, creating a, a new startup or a new product and you want to test it out and see if it fits, this is a great way of figuring out, did it actually fit or not? Do people want your product? Can they use your product? 
all of that stuff's going to be translated into actionable needs, things that people need and things that you're going to fix. You know, ultimately, this is also coming to, you know, kind of bring up who needs what and why do they need it? So the question is, is it necessary for every brand or company to think about its com um, competitor strategies to build their own business? Yes, you need to know your competitors and you need to have a strategy for how you deal with each of those competitors. So yes, but don't forget that your competitors can often be your partners. You might see them as a competitor, but there might be a way to collaborate. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of creating uh, journey maps and mapping out what my, you know, what the customer journey might look like. You know, um, what are their steps along the way? What is their persona? Again, what are their wants, their needs? How are they using your product? Where are they going? Why are they going there? How does it make them feel? Because again, you don't want them to be frustrated, you want them to be happy and you want to turn them into fans and advocates, right? Whatever you do, don't keep the ideas in your head. Collaborate with your team. You know, put, uh, put them on this kind of mind mapping board, organize them, put them together so you can figure out and really know your customer, know what your customer wants and needs. You know, your prototype may not be like this. Your prototype may be a piece of paper or it may be a version one of an app. Yeah, see, your prototype might look like this. It's a bunch of stencils and colored paper. Yeah, mapping is like a, a graphic or drawing and it's like, um, it's like the experience, the journey that they're going on where you're drawing it. And it can happen, you know, on paper or there are um, journey mapping tools that are for free that exist as well. But, you know, once you get your prototype together, you want to, you want to go take it for others to see it. You know what I mean? Um, don't be afraid to share it with others. I know that's kind of scary when you're not ready. Um, but join your audience on their journey, you know, be part of it so you can see what they're doing and what their frustrations and pain points are. You know, communicate with them. Align, but also align with your team. You know, don't forget your audience is made up of real people with real problems and real pain points, you know. Um, remember that these are people too. And imagine when you get frustrated with a product or you want something to work right. You know, um, put yourself in their shoes as much as you can. Empathize with them. Um, one of you asked where you can get uh, uh, badges or where you can learn about design thinking. Um, I'm going to put this in the chat window. I'm just going to make sure that I um, put it in right. I'm going to make sure it works. Give me one second. All right. Yeah. Hello, yeah, it works. Yes. Ma'am, can you tell me about that? How uh, design thinking can help us in software development? How it can help you in software development? Yes, ma'am. Um, it will help you understand your customers so that when you are building a solution, don't be an order taker. Don't be, don't be this, the person who is just taking orders from a business leader who's telling you what to build understand why you're building what you're building. If you understand why you're building what you're building, it will help you be a better developer because ultimately your job as a software developer is to build stuff, right? So if you understand what you're building, why you're building it, what pain points you're solving, 
it might help you do a, it might help you kind of think about the um the the journey through your solution better you know if you're an, i don't know if you're a app developer or website developer or you do think you're doing things with e-commerce it doesn't matter or an enterprise developer you know in order to build anything it's just kind of like you know let's say as a as a builder you know meaning like someone a construction worker if the construction worker doesn't understand why he's building what he's building and and what the vision of the of what's being built is he's he, he's not going to do or she's not going to do as good of a job building because he or she might miss things as they're making decisions that might sit outside of the drawings or might sit outside of you know what they got from the architect because a lot of times we need to make decisions about how things are done or how people get from point a to point b but if we understand how our customers are going to use the product and what are their aspirations and what do they want and what do they need we're going to be better software developers does that make sense okay ma'am thank you ma'am yeah so um ma'am i have also a question yeah when you said approach your audience, but uh, we all know the technology in Pakistan is not that much good as in US or any European country. Uh, how would we approach our audience? Our audience do not know anything about technology. The concept here is uh, to be an engineer or a doctor. Uh, the technology is not that much advanced here. So how would we approach anything uh, else? Uh, what would we do? So, you know, one of the things you could approach them in different ways and there may be, you know, it, it may be, a, it may not be about asking them what they want, but asking them, you know, different, you know, showing them examples of, hey, if you were able to do this, 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 and this, how would this help you? <coughs> you know, then, sometimes uh, if you ask people. That's not, that, yeah. and that's not going to help me, but. Uh, I'm saying there are a little bit of software uh, houses in Pakistan. Uh, how can we do for them? What can we do to um, expand these? The, what, what do your audience mean? What's the audience here mean? So I think ultimately when you're talking about, you know, it, and I guess it also depends upon what your, you know, who your market is. So are you thinking of building something? Uh, is there something that specific that you're, that you're thinking of building? Okay. You know, I would think about, you know, is there something specific you want to build and do that way you have a real example, you know, um, and there, you know, even if, um, there are people in the country who are not technologically savvy. There are a lot of people in Pakistan who are actually technologically savvy. There is a thriving developer, you know, community in, you know, in Pakistan. Now, not everybody, you know, is literate. Not everybody is in school. You know, you have a, a huge divide between people who have and people who don't have. You know, you know this more than me. Um, you know, obviously, if you're trying to sell you know some kind of e-commerce solution and you're asking people who don't have jobs and don't have money you know maybe that's not your right target target audience think about who you would be trying to sell to those are the kinds of people you want to talk to but also remember that sometimes your customers don't know what they want and what they need because they've never experienced like if i i came to you years ago and i said you know um what if I, you know, what if I'm going to launch an app that helps you go and and rent out somebody else's house for the weekend? You might think like that's ridiculous. That doesn't make any sense. Like nobody's going to rent out their house to 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 a stranger, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Mem our certification necessary keeping the bachelor's study aside. Can you repeat the question? Uh, Ma'am, are certifications uh, necessary keeping the bachelor's degree aside? You know, I'm a big fan of uh, certifications. Um, and, you know, I know that a lot of companies uh, look at certifications, especially when you're in technology. Um, so I think for, for people in technical roles, I think having cloud computing certifications are important. I think design thinking is important because it shows that you understand how to talk to 
you know, how, how you have that, you know, how to understand and empathize. Um, but I also think it's very important for you to have practical experience and, you know, to create and make and do things um, on your own and experiment. Uh, this is one of the challenges that I often see with young people in Pakistan is, you know, um, there are some people, a lot of people who volunteer, but I think um, because of many of the educational systems around the world being very theoretical in nature, don't get caught up in um, only getting certifications and only getting a university degree. Think about what you can do to gain practical experience while you're in college, while you're in university, while you're, you know, and, and even if you're not, continuing to sharpen your skills beyond your job. And that could be volunteering with a startup, that could be creating your own thing, that could also be, um, you know, um, uh, working with a nonprofit, these kinds of experiences are, are incredibly valuable and they show you how you can actually, um, you know, practice your skills and write about that stuff that you're doing. You know, when, when I talked about having a personal brand and having a website, you know, demonstrate what you've created and built. You know, if you're, if you're a technologist, you know, build your own website so you can show what you've done, build web, build a few websites for, for some friends, build a mobile application for something in your life, you know, or start out with like power apps or something that is like a, a low code, no code model, you know, so you can highlight real practical things. Ma'am, do you have any YouTube channel or Instagram or something like that? What's that? Uh, do you have any YouTube channel or uh, Instagram or something like that? Um, I don't have uh, I don't have YouTube. I've been thinking about it. I just haven't had time to do it. Um, I I'm most active on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, I also have Facebook, but um, my Facebook has become a bit a bit wild. There's just way too much going on there. Um, and I, I do have Instagram. My Instagram is really more for me personally, like just sharing pictures of my dog and me and, and you know, my friends and stuff like that. Cause I use Instagram differently. I don't use it for like professional stuff. Sometimes I'll post like some of the talks I do and, and that sort of thing. But here's, I'll put my Instagram in here. I think that's it. Let me just make sure that that's it. And it's funny that I forgot it. Yeah, that's the right one. I couldn't remember if there was an I at the end of it, but that's my, that's my, um, my Instagram. And then again, this is my Twitter. I have a Facebook group that I, that I um, kind of use for like announcing like technical training and stuff like that. Um, as the student experience leader within my division, um, I do a lot of training on enterprise computing skills that empower people to go into enterprise computing jobs. Um, so, but I, that platform is um, something that I'm looking forward to kind of redesigning, doing some different things with and um, kind of relooking at it. I started on writing, rewriting some of the copy um, actually yesterday. You know, and one of the things that I said was, oh, I'm going to rewrite this copy. I'm going to post it, but, you know, I need to talk to some of the audience to see if this resonates, and I will. Any, uh, any other questions? Uh, yes, ma'am, I have a question. Uh, ma'am, uh, you know, uh, there, there are uh, some persons who can't express themselves in front of people. I'm an introvert person. So uh, a person who is uh, who's an introvert and can't express himself, how can he become a brand or a change his attitude? What are his, what should be his uh, uh, priorities and what should be his goals? Um, so I'll, I'll ask you, um, do you feel more comfortable um, writing? as opposed to um, speaking in front of others, because it's very possible to build your brand through writing. 
and um, you know, through being out there through through written word, is that something that you feel comfortable with personally, or um, what do you think about that? Um, I Actually, I am not that type of introvert. I am I am introvert of type. Uh, I I don't have friends, many friends. Oh, uh, okay. So I can express myself. I mean, I have, I am trying to do freelancing and uh, I have yeah. many other. Skills. I am trying to learn skills uh, to build myself uh, and uh, continue my studies at uh, university. Uh, so, what should be my priorities? I mean, I don't have many friends and I don't have a lot of connections. I am trying to build myself. I'm trying to uh, prioritize my uh, choices. I think this is a, a great a great way of starting to network is through coming to stuff like this. So after this, I would tell you, um, you know, come out and, and follow me on Twitter. See what you can do to to build your network in, in unique ways. Show up to meetups, ask questions. And, you know, one of the things you can also do is, you know, if you have certain strengths like what what are, what are your strengths? What are you good at? Are you a developer or what, what are you good at? Yes, I'm sort of developer. I mean, I'm trying to, I have learned uh, web development. I have learned HTML, CSS, and I'm trying to learn PHP and JavaScript, etc. I'm trying to learn. I am, uh, I mean, I'm trying to uh, go on a browser and search uh, everything which I want, uh, but mm -hmm. I'm sort of a developer. So, you know, one, one of the things that you could do is um, just to start to build up your network and your experience is, um, you know, is there is there a nonprofit that you could that you could help? That, you know, is there a, a nonprofit that you could help to build something for them to help them with their operations and say, you know what, I'm looking to network more. I'm looking to build my resume more. I'm looking to build my skills more. Um, I'd like to volunteer for the next three months. Here's how much time I have. Can I build something for you? I, uh, I've, I've done that many times. I did that for um, five years um, before I transitioned my career into what it is today because I was in a different career and I wanted to change my career, but I didn't have all the skills that I needed, the practical skills. And so I did it through volunteerism by volunteering to take on new projects to demonstrate that I have the skills and I had the ability to take on the, the, the kinds of work that I wanted to do. Um, I was working in, uh, in uh, marketing and supply chain. That was my job. And I didn't like what I was doing. I thought it was boring. And so I um, wanted to go into something that was more social, socially responsible. I wanted to do something with youth and education and entrepreneurship. And no, I, I was applying for jobs and nobody wanted to give me a chance. Nobody cared about my experience and nobody wanted to uh, yes, interview me. Yes, and... That's the basic role, ma'am. I am trying to do freelancing and I try to contact uh, many people. And uh, I, I did get a, ch I did got a chance. Uh, there was a guy from uh, Amer America, United States, and uh, he tried to uh, uh, reach me, but uh, it didn't uh, happen quite uh, frankly. And he said that he cannot give me money. He will get pay me directly, or he will he cannot use online banking system. That was my problem. I tried to contact a freelancer and said, if you don't have a skill, then I cannot hire you. Uh, and I tried to contact him again, and he said, no, I have no, I do not have the job. Even he had a lot of jobs. Mm. Uh, so uh, I. So, it, uh, so according to you, I think my priority should be to enhance my skills and then uh, step into these type of freelance marketing or if, uh, these, this business. Yeah, right? start, to, start to write and talk about and demonstrate the skills that you're learning. Talk, write about your journey. Um, you know, create your own website where you, you talk about your skills. You know what I mean? Um, and you demonstrate that you've got these skills, you know, so let's say you do a project, do a write up about that project each time you finish a project, even if it's something that you're doing for fun, for, you know, for fun, you know, don't just take on paid, you know, paid responsibilities, take on volunteer responsibilities as well when you have free time. Those are really good ways of practically demonstrating your experience. You know, um, and it's also a way of building your resume so that when people want to know what skills you have, you can show them. Yes, sir. thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right. Does anyone else have any any other questions? And is this helpful? Ask me anything. <laughs> Maybe you want to meet my dog. I know. I'm going to show you my dog. Hold on. Come. This is 
my dog Frida. Hi, she's so cute. She's so cute. Isn't she cute? She has yeah, her. Cute. She has a little disco scarf. See it. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, ma'am. I have a question. Uh, please, if you have um, time, then can you answer yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sometimes we have, you know, great ideas in our head, and you know, sort of very big ideas, and we want to obviously implement that. But uh, sometimes the surroundings makes us, uh, you know, less believe in that particular idea that we think that we can't make it. So uh, should we change our idea, or uh, should we, you know, continue doing it because maybe that we are seeing ourselves or perceiving ourselves, you know, somewhere in our life or uh, at some sort of stage. Uh, so we should hold on. Right. So I think. We I think that you, you know, we always need to surround ourselves around people who believe in us and people who will help us believe in ourselves so that when we like get scared about, you know, whether we should, you know, execute an idea or not, or implement an idea or create a business, surround yourself around people who have made businesses, who have created things and who have done things, you know, risky things, things that are different, you know, um, and find people who will help to um, fuel you, not scare you. And I know when you have a lot of aunties who uh, are talking and they have this to say and that to say, and you should be doing this and you shouldn't be doing that. You know, a lot of people and uh, have, especially family, you know, the community, everybody has something yeah. to say. Think about who you should share your ideas with and share them with the right people. Yeah, all right. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, because uh, whenever uh, we start thinking even of uh, about our many, you know, more decisions of life, so we do talk about it to, you know, particular people. And um, most of the time, they do scare us instead of, you know. So don't talk to those people. They don't need to know what you're doing. Yeah, they come really up don't with, Come up with like another narrative. I mean, I'm not saying you should lie to them. But I'm saying coming up with come up with another narrative. There are certain people who I don't tell about all my startup stuff because they're like, oh, you're doing too much. Yeah. Or so sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, I got, you know, I, I'm, I'm still working on some of my startup stuff. But luckily, I've got a great team. They're doing a lot of that stuff, you know, and I, I, I talk about it differently. You know, I'm not lying, but I talk about it differently with certain people. When yeah, I talk okay. with people who are negative, there are, a, there, there are many things that I don't share with them because I know they're negative and they're just going to bring me down. Um, so be able to recognize the people who bring you down and take care of how much you share with them and when you share with them. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. It's really um, helpful for me. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Yeah, we are the only ones who are stopping ourselves from being the person um, we want to be. And um, sometimes the best ideas are the ideas that no one understands but you. Yeah. So we, some, we yeah. ourselves, they can't see. So, yeah, I understood that. I really do. Yeah, it's scary too. Like when you think like, wait, is this really a good idea or do I suck and I'm an idiot? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then, you know, the family does that. And uh, yeah. it is obviously uh, very hurtful and at the same time, like stops you uh, chasing your dreams. But I think we should even not discuss with them because they don't see what we see. Uh, That's so exactly right. I mean, and I'm not saying you should lie to the family, but Find what it is that you can tell them without telling them everything. Because you know, we always have people in our family who are just negative. They're just yeah. negative. They just have negative things to say. And no matter what's going on, unless you're a doctor or an engineer, you know, unless you're a doctor or, you know, a pharmacist or whatever, like, you know, nothing will really? be good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't exactly, know. Man. Because I belong to that, you know, a uh, family who most you know mostly are connected with medical line and everything so they also try to implement their ideas and decisions on me but I always try to chase my dreams and now uh, maybe that 
I'll make it happen and make them proud. And they will obviously one day saying that we'll be saying that yes, you did it, and I'm proud of. But you. most importantly, make yourself proud because if you if you live your life trying to make other people proud, you're always going to fail. The reason being is you can't control who's going to be proud or who's going to who's going to not be proud. And sometimes people even when when you do something amazing, then they're jealous. Like I'll give you yeah. an example. My mom. My mom. Yeah. I will tell her about ideas. You know, I, I, I try not to tell her about all the things that I'm working on. Like she'll ask me like, oh, what big thing did you do today? You know, or what big thing did you accomplish this month? Yeah. And it's the same narrative every time we talk. And here's how it goes. What's the big thing you did this month? Oh, um, I did a hackathon with the United Nations and I, I, I got written up in Forbes. I got, yeah. my project was in Forbes. Yeah. And it was on the, you know, the cover of UN News and the um, UN uh, Secretary General, uh, UNESCO Secretary General wrote about my project. And yeah. my quote was next to hers. You know what my mom said? What? She didn't say, oh, congratulations, that's amazing. She goes, gosh, I've always been so dumb. Oh. Instead of congratulating me, she compared yeah. herself with me and called herself stupid and called herself dumb. And so it was more like sympathize with me because I'm not as smart as you. And so I, I really, you know, I, and I've gotten to know her over time that this is just how she is. This is just what she does. And, you know, she's still my mom, but it makes me not want to tell her about the good things because it always, the narrative always goes like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll give you an example, another example, yeah. my sister, yeah. my sister, um, yeah. I, I got a, I got a, I got a promotion at Microsoft when I was working at Microsoft before IBM and my sister goes, wow, I didn't even know you knew anything about computers. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, hi, I, I guess I don't. Yeah. And so I don't, I, you know, I, I don't tell them a lot of stuff because I know that like they're, they just don't have the right attitude and it's sad and it sucks. And you want to, you want everybody to be like a cheerleader for you. Find yeah. your squad. Sometimes your yeah. squad is not your family. Yeah. Yeah. We have to find, you know, people who are positive and who can put something into our dreams, not uh, to uh, scare us or, you know, put us down. So I think uh, I'll obviously, uh, I am gonna, you know, follow your, uh, whatever you said, and I really loved it. And uh, inshallah, Tala, that uh, someday I'm gonna make me proud. And inshallah. I'm gonna well, just think about the little things that you can do to make yourself proud, you know? And I find that, you know, when we expect others to feel a certain way, yeah. our, our expectations are always wrong. Yeah. And we have more control over how we feel, you know, yeah. so aim to make yourself proud and aim to hit your own goals and find people who believe in you, who are positive and who inspire you, who empower you because, and, and be empowered yourself because empowered women or empowered yeah. people, empowered men, empower yeah. others. Yeah. Yeah. And most of the time, I think we should find those people who stand with us and who stand with our uh, decisions or opinions, maybe that they also see ourselves, uh, they also see us as we do. But I think, first of all, we shouldn't go for them and we should make it, you know, ourselves and by ourselves and everything. So I always do that. And uh, I don't go for people and don't, you know, go and ask them, what should I do? And uh, I failed, so I am, you know, depressed and everything. So I make myself, in, uh, so I empower myself. So I think uh, this is what I do. And uh, that's what I have, uh, you know, learned from you now. So inshallah, Tala, someday I'm really gonna make me proud. And thank you very, very much. <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much. All right, I have time for one more question, unless uh, my friends from Circle have some closing words that they would like to share. Yeah, okay. 
Any last questions? I was looking for Frida. I don't know where my dog went. She's gone. She must have left the other room. She got shy maybe seeing all of you on the camera. <laughs> all right, cool. So thank you. Um, thank you for allowing me to come into your lives. Uh, thank you for coming into my life. Um, you had asked really, really thoughtful questions about, you know, design thinking and why does it matter? You asked, you know, questions about do certifications and badges matter? And, you know, how do I, how do I get my confidence to, um, to build and create and do new things that other people might think are crazy? Oh, yeah. Frida came back. Oh, here we go. Here, Frida wants to say goodbye to you. Come on, Frida. Okay, Frida wanted to say goodbye. So thank you for having us today. Frida, bye. enjoy. So enjoyable. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right, good. Anything else that you wanted to say, Circle Women, in, in closing? I want to say thank you for oh, arranging this you. type of webinars. All right, so I'm just going to conclude the session here and, and thank you. Thank you so much, Melissa, for taking out time for us and, you know, for, for such an insightful and wonderful workshop. Um, I think we have a couple of questions left. <laughs> oh, yeah, no worries. No worries. I'm happy to. Yeah, I want to say uh, how we get the video lecture. Oh, um, you get the video. video. You'll get the video at the we end. Uh, links available. Get up, Lever, a chocolate. Okay, cool. So um, she'll share the video. Any other questions before we go? Hi, Melissa. I want to ask a question. Yeah, sure. Um, I want to ask that uh, most of the time we have so many ideas in our brain and the day just uh, pass by thinking about them. How can we focus on one idea that this is the best and we should start working on them? You know, um, I struggle with that. <laughs> And I end up working with on a lot of ideas at the same time until one just pops. And whenever that one pops, then I work on that idea. And sometimes another one just pops. Don't feel like you need to choose between ideas until one pops for you. Okay, so we have to work on them, all of them. You have to prioritize. I can't tell you how to prioritize the ideas in your head. You have to find a way of prioritizing them, you know? Um, you have to think about your goals. You know, what are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to do? And how do those things help you achieve what you're trying to achieve? Do they help you or do they get in the way? Or are they just noise? Okay, I got your point. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, everyone. I am uh, gonna sign off. Have an absolutely wonderful Saturday. Frida and I are gonna, are gonna go for a walk. And I think you will have a wonderful that. Saturday. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye.